what uh, causes uh, people to experience despair um, because uh, Jordan Peterson sent me a statistic uh, yesterday. Here, I'll send it to you, Jamie, because it's, it's really kind of disturbing. It's essentially saying that 30, uh, p women that hit the age of 30, that 50% of them um, now are, have no children, and 50% of them will never have children, and that 90% of them are going to regret it, which is really horrible. Like, if you really stop and think about that, 90% of them regretting it. Okay, I'll send this to you. The epidemic, the not dare. Okay, no, it's a, um, unfortunately, it's a video. We're not going to watch it. It's like an hour and 18 minutes. But th that statistic alone, that 90% of them are going to regret not having children. You know, the, the, there's a, there's a, a series of biological switches that go off in a person's life. You know, um, becoming an adult, being on your own, um, uh, be becoming self-sufficient, uh, finding an occupation, uh, finding groups of friends and community, and having a family. There, are those th there's a thing that people, they do, and it be they become a different thing because of that. You know, you become a different person when you, you become uh, a mother or a father. You know, you do. You, you, something happens. You, you reach like a no, another stage of life. It's a different chapter. And for people that never reach that stage, for men, and I've talked about this many times, it's like very depressing. There's a lot of uh, comedian friends. Wait, wait, I which have. part's depressing? Um, I was going to get into that. Oh. There's, it's very depressing when you see a, a lot of um, men that do not have children mm. that are in their like 60s and 70s and they've never had kids mm. and they're not married and they're just adrift. It's, it's really sad because... These same guys that like really valued freedom when they were 30 and 40, um, they find themselves in this like purposeless existence as their body f starts to fade and fail. And they realize like, oh my God, I've missed a whole thing in life because I didn't want to take that chance because I didn't want to, you know, either contribute to overpopulation or I didn't want to lose my freedom or whatever the rationale was. And all of a sudden you find yourself in your late 60s alone. No children, no wife. And you, you can't have children anymore. It's over. What do you do? I mean, maybe a man can. Some old men have kids. Maybe. You know, you can do it. Maybe. But you got to find some young lady who's still got eggs that's willing to let you fuck her. And it's increasingly less likely as you get older that they want that. You know? Yeah. I, 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 I'm amazed at how when my wife and I got married, I was not... I was I was indifferent towards having kids. Really, I didn't think it was like, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I guess so if that's what you want. Um, and of course, I feel the same way you do, which is like, you know, most most important thing I've ever done. Most, you know, greatest source of pleasure uh, is actually kids, but not without pain, right? I mean, it's really hard, as you know, to raise kids. And uh, I, I, you know, a friend of mine gave me the greatest piece of advice recently, which was uh, something his wife does. Now, we have two boys, right? So we have this experience where they're like, and they're feral, right? Like they're full on out of control, much, much more difficult than our daughter was. And um, at least three times a day, they do something that just makes you want to like <laughs> kill them, right? Like, <laughs> and uh, my friend was like, anytime you are get, you're getting frustrated with them, just close your eyes and imagine you are 80 years old and you have a time machine that is bringing you right back to this moment. And this is the only moment you will get with them again oh, when they're young. Wow. That's great. Advice. It's awesome. I mean, it's incredible advice. That's very good advice. Very good advice. And it totally changes everything. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll take this all day long. Like, you, you know, it was one of the big shifts with me. It wasn't just the, the, it, sh it changed who I am as a person. It changed. It, there's a lot of things that changed raising kids. But one of the big things that changed was how I look at other people. Because I look at other people like, oh, you used to be a baby. Hmm. I didn't used to do that until I was like, I guess I was like in my 30s when I figured that out. I didn't hmm. figure out that people used to be babies. I know that sounds so stupid. Like, where do you think they came from? Hmm. I would see some guy who was like 40 years old as a douchebag. I was like, oh, he's always been that guy. Right. He was static. born that way. Yeah. You're static. Yeah. You know, but it's – you. I had I I gained um, a much higher level 
of um, compassion and understanding and much more charitable towards people. Much more, much more forgiving. Because I go, somebody fucked you over. Not just somebody, but a series of people and life itself fucked you over. And that's why you're a shithead. You're a shithead because you met the wrong people, you had the wrong experiences, you had the wrong life, you had the wrong parents, all the above. You know. It's interesting. I, I agree with you completely. And I'm amazed at how people can't hold two truths simultaneously around this. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, everything you said is correct. And yet on the other hand, there have to be consequences for being a shithead. Yeah. And that everything you're saying doesn't abolish the fact that if you're a shithead, like you're going to live a different life. Yeah. And, um, and those two things are concurrently true. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. That, that's very important. 